A new railway in China is about to send bullet trains straight under the sea. Not a ferry, not another suspension bridge. An underwater tunnel designed for trains running at 250 kilometers per hour. This tunnel will connect Ningbo on the mainland to the island city of Zhoshan. For the first time, high-speed rail will pass beneath an active shipping channel. China's high-speed rail network is already the largest in the world, stretching more than 46,000 kilometers, covering nearly every major city. Yet until recently, one corner of the country remained left out, the islands of Zhoshan. Despite sitting right next to Ningbo, a city tied into the national rail grid, Zhoshan had no trains at all. People relied on ferries or road bridges that were often clogged or vulnerable to storms. For years, it was the only major region on China's eastern coast without a railway connection. That gap is about to close. Engineers are building the Ningbo Zhoshan High Speed Railway, a 77 kilometer line that will finally tie these islands to the mainland. More than 90% of the route will run on bridges or tunnels, including a 16 kilometer undersea section through the Jintang Strait. When finished, passengers will be able to travel from Ningbo to Zhoshan in under 30 minutes, a trip that can take two hours by road. But why is China pushing so hard for this project? The answer is not just convenience. It ties directly into Beijing's broader goals. Building a one-hour rail circle across Zhejiang province, integrating Zhoshan's busy ports into national trade routes, and showcasing engineering that very few countries are capable of attempting. China's high-speed rail network has grown at a pace no other country has matched. 20 years ago, there were barely any bullet trains. Now there are more than 46,000 kilometers of high-speed lines in operation, around 70% of the world's total. This is not just about convenience. It's about holding the country together, cutting travel times between regions, and driving economic growth into areas that used to feel disconnected. That's where Ningbo and Zhoshan come in. Zhejiang province has a plan to connect its cities so that no trip between them takes more than about an hour. For years, Zhoshan was the outlier, an island chain sitting just off the coast. It relied on ferries and highway bridges that were slow, crowded, and at the mercy of the weather. It was the only major part of eastern China without a railway connection. The new line changes that. Trains will enter the tunnel on the Ningbo side, descend under the shipping lanes, and surface again on Jintang Island before continuing on to Zhoshan. Construction officially began in 2022. Huge tunnel boring machines started their work in 2025, digging toward each other from opposite ends of the seabed. If everything goes to plan, it will wrap up by 2026, and trains are expected to start running by 2028. This project is not small in cost or scale. The investment is about $4 billion. It includes seven new stations along the route, and in some stretches, parallel routes are being built for cars as well as trains. That means this is not just a high-speed rail line, it's also a highway corridor under the sea. But building a tunnel under the sea for bullet trains is not just another civil engineering job. It's one of the toughest projects China has ever attempted. The biggest challenge is the seabed itself. Engineers have to cut through several different layers of soil and rock, from soft clay that shifts under pressure to hard granite that can dull steel cutters in days. All of this happens while enormous water pressure pushes in from above. To do it, they're using some of the largest tunnel boring machines ever built. One of them, called Ding Haihao, is 14.6 meters wide and weighs 4,350 tons. Another, named Yongzhou, is working from the opposite end. These machines grind forward about 16 meters a day, placing concrete rings behind them to form the tunnel walls as they move. When they meet under the strait, the alignment has to be nearly perfect. Engineers are aiming for less than 2 centimeters of error after more than 16 kilometers of boring. What makes these machines different from the ones used in city subways is their intelligence. They're fitted with sensors, 5G links, and automated systems that constantly check the geology ahead. If the soil changes, the machine can adjust the pressure or cutter speed in real time. This prevents collapses and helps maintain a safe environment for workers. The tunnel will sit as much as 70 to 78 meters below the sea surface. At that depth, the pressure on the walls is immense. To keep passengers safe, the tunnel is lined with reinforced concrete segments, sealed against leaks, and fitted with backup pumping systems. There will also be cross passages between the twin tunnels so people can evacuate if an emergency ever occurs. 
And the tunnel is not the only feat here. The railway also requires new ocean-spanning bridges, including the Shihuman Combined Road Rail Bridge that is set to become the largest combined road rail cable stayed bridge in the world. Between the giant bridges and the undersea tunnel, more than 90% of this line is a direct fight against geography. However, the Ningbo Zhushan Tunnel is not just about cutting a car trip down from two hours to half an hour, it's tied to far bigger goals. For the local region, it means Zhoushan is no longer on the sidelines. The city will finally be connected to the same high-speed network that links Shanghai, Hangzhou, and Beijing. That brings practical benefits. Workers can commute more easily, students can attend universities on the mainland without long travel times, and tourists can reach Zhoushan's beaches and temples in a single train ride instead of planning a ferry. But there's also an economic angle. Zhoushan is home to part of the Ningbo Zhoushan port, one of the busiest cargo ports in the world. By linking it directly with high-speed rail, China is making sure people and goods can move in and out quickly, keeping the port competitive as global trade grows. Faster connections also mean the industries around the port, shipbuilding, fisheries, logistics, have better access to workers, markets, and investors. Nationally, the tunnel helps reinforce China's development strategies. It strengthens the Yangtze River economic belt by tying the coast more tightly to inland provinces. It supports the Belt and Road Initiative by making the Maritime Silk Road more efficient. Even though the line is domestic, it has ripple effects for international trade because it strengthens one of China's key gateways to the world. And on the global stage, this project carries a symbolic weight. If China can run bullet trains under the sea at 250 km per hour, it shows an ability to take on projects that other countries have either abandoned or are still only discussing. That message, China can do what others hesitate to attempt, is part of why this tunnel matters beyond Zhejiang province. Also, China is not the first country to send trains under the sea. The Channel Tunnel between Britain and France runs more than 50 kilometers, with 38 of those under the English Channel. Japan's Seiken Tunnel is even longer at 54 kilometers, including 23 kilometers beneath the seabed between Honshu and Hokkaido. Both are older projects built in the late 20th century, and both still hold world records for length. But there's a key difference. Neither was designed from the start for true high-speed rail. Eurostar trains in the Channel Tunnel run slower than they do on open track, and Shinkansen trains in the Seiken Tunnel are capped at around 160 km per hour because of safety and pressure concerns. China's Jintang Tunnel is planned for 250 km per hour from day one. That makes it the first undersea tunnel tailored specifically for bullet train speeds. Closer to home, China already has an underwater tunnel as part of the Hong Kong Zhuhai Macau Bridge. That tunnel is six and a half kilometers long, but it's for cars, and it was built using a different method, immersed tube sections lowered into a trench. The Ningbo Zhoushan Tunnel is nearly three times longer, bored through rock with giant machines, and designed for trains instead of road traffic. Other countries are working on new projects too. Denmark and Germany are building the Feymarn Belt Tunnel under the Baltic Sea, which will be 18 kilometers long. It will carry both road traffic and trains, though the trains will top out at around 200 km per hour. Compared to that, China's project pushes the envelope further with higher speeds and a deeper bore under active shipping channels. So while it won't take the record for the longest tunnel, it does take the title for being the first underwater high-speed rail tunnel of its kind, and it sets the bar for what future projects might look like. And China is not treating the Ningbo Zhoushan Tunnel as the final word. It's more like a stepping stone. Engineers are already studying the idea of an even more ambitious project across the Bohai Strait in northern China. That one could stretch over 120 kilometers, more than double the length of the Channel Tunnel, and link the provinces of Shandong and Liaoning. If the current tunnel proves that high-speed rail can safely run under the sea, it strengthens the case for that kind of megalink. Other possibilities have been discussed too. Hainan Island in the south still depends on ferries and flights, and planners have looked at how a tunnel under the Chongzhou Strait might connect it to the mainland. There have even been speculative studies about a Taiwan Strait tunnel, though politics make that unlikely in the near future. The point is, once the technology and experience exist, the range of options widens. The lessons here may also spread beyond China. 
Chinese companies now experienced with large undersea boring machines have shown interest in other countries' projects, so what's happening in Zhejiang could influence how other countries approach their own undersea connections. There's also a climate angle. High-speed rail produces far less carbon per passenger than short-haul flights or car trips. If more regions build tunnels like this one, it could shift some travel away from planes and ferries, reducing emissions. That makes underwater rail not only a feat of engineering, but also part of a broader push for more sustainable transport. China has developed a reputation for tackling projects that seem almost impossible. Over the past two decades, it has built the longest bridges, the fastest trains, and entire cities linked by high-speed rail in timelines that surprise the rest of the world. The country already built the Hong Kong Zhuhai Macau Bridge with its own undersea tunnel. It built the Danyang Kunshan Viaduct, the longest bridge in the world. Adding the world's first true underwater high speed rail tunnel reinforces that story. When geography puts up an obstacle, China responds with infrastructure on a massive scale. This culture of mega projects also shapes public expectation. People in China now assume that if a problem is big enough, the government will try to solve it with engineering, no matter how ambitious it looks. That's why a project like this doesn't shock many locals. It feels like the natural next step in a country where high-speed rail has already become the default way to travel. So what do you think? Are we entering an era where undersea high-speed rail becomes normal? Connecting more islands and even countries? Or will this project remain one of a kind? Let me know your thoughts in the comments.